and then your stockpile's nice and grown and you can eat really well every month. You increase your purchasing power. You can get better bulk discounts. You can buy more out. Hello and welcome to my new YouTube channel. My name is Julie. You might know me as Mrs. Prairie Wife over on Instagram. I am running this channel now because I had a lot of requests to talk more about budgeting and groceries and how to prepare food for your family and keep your expenses as low as possible, especially with inflation. I also talk about homemaking and a little bit about femininity. <laughs> we are in my husband's corner of the apartment right now with a desk behind us and all his like work get up. So <laughs> not the most aesthetic YouTube channel, but hopefully one that's going to add a lot of value to your life by teaching you how to save money and increase your purchasing power, which is something really important for those of us who are maybe not always in like super powerful financial positions and so every dollar really does count. I will say that our journey started in 2017. We sold absolutely everything we owned except what fit inside two vehicles and we moved myself, my husband, our almost two year old daughter at the time and a dog and a cat <laughs> into a new province, into a new house, an apartment. Um, and our intention was that we knew we were going to set ourselves back a little bit, but this province is more affordable. So hopefully that would allow us to move ahead faster and basically catch up and surpass where we were at when we moved. So that did happen. I'm super glad to say that in the last five years since living in our new province, in our new home, we've been able to save a lot of money, pay off a lot of debt and put ourselves in a much better financial position. We've been able to save money and we're actually in the final stretch of saving up for a house, which is really exciting because I am so tired of living in apartments, to be honest with you. But this was a choice we made for the temporary short term so that we would be able to have more in the long run. So anyways, I want to teach you a grocery budgeting tip that allowed me to be able to set us ahead financially using groceries and our grocery budget back when we first started out. So we had about $50, I actually wrote this out for you. <laughs> I had about $50 a week in order to shop for groceries. And this is typically what the budget looked like, about $20 for produce, $5 for snacks. My daughter loved those fish crackers, um, like the little gold fishes. So she ate those kind of a lot. Um, and then dairy and so $10 for dairy and $15 for meat. So that was $50 um, and we were able to set ourselves ahead by doing what I call the snowballing stockpile method. So every single week, even including until today, and I will do a separate video on this, but I have a method for how I do my grocery budget. And it basically includes creating a meal plan, identifying exactly how much of each ingredient I'm going to need, and then budgeting for each specific ingredient so I don't go over on any of my ingredients. And that way I can make sure I get everything on my list and stay under budget. So I would do that and I would Back then, it was 2017, $20 at our farmer's market would fill a bag of produce, like pretty big, right? And so we were able to do that. And occasionally, pretty much every week, we would be able to come in about 2 to $5 under budget. Now that does not sound like a lot, but when you look at the cost of different items for your pantry, $7 for a little thing of flour. I mean, it was maybe like a sack like this, and a little thing of sugar for $5, yeast for $5, etc. I'm pretty sure this looks backwards to you. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> but when you're able to get things for those prices, you can use those two to $5 to purchase items for your pantry. So I would go buy a thing of dried beans or I would go buy a can of tomato sauce and stuff like that. And because this was above and beyond what was already on that weekly meal plan, these are items we weren't going to have to use right away. I could just put them into my pantry and save them for a little bit later, the stockpile. So as I did that, the pantry became stocked enough that I could start to spend maybe less money on protein or maybe less money on snacks 
because I would be making them from home. Or maybe we would have a couple extra bags of those precious fish crackers stockpiled so we wouldn't have to buy them in a week. So that would add a little, a little bit more money that week that I would be able to spend on something different for the stockpile once again. And so every single week I would do this and eventually the stockpile became big enough that we could eat for an extra few days, sometimes all the way up to an extra week without really having to go to the grocery store which meant we had more purchasing power because we would still have the $50 for the week for groceries, but we wouldn't need to touch it. So rather than being like, cool, 50 extra dollars, let's go get Starbucks. <laughs> we would take the $50 and we would add more to the stockpile again, which meant once again, now we were a week ahead, now we're two weeks ahead, eventually we were three weeks ahead, eventually we were four weeks ahead, and our purchasing power continued to increase. So when I say purchasing power increasing with your groceries, what I mean is we would no longer have to buy like little amounts of things each week just to get us through the week, you know, like three carrots instead of like a bunch of carrots or one thing of corn rather than a bag of corn or something, right? We, we wouldn't have to buy such small amounts. We could buy more, we could get bulk discounts. For example, with my bulk discount savings, I get ground beef for under $7 a pound, usually about $6.50 a pound at the local farmer's market, and I get 10 pounds at one time, so I spend about $65, whereas I used to spend about $13 a pound at the grocery store, which is just so much more. <laughs> so as we increased our purchasing power, we were able to start buying more and stockpiling more. We could go maybe to Costco or another wholesaler and purchase a flat of canned pasta sauce or canned tomato sauce or tomato paste or canned beans or anything like that for maybe 10 to $11 per flat. So if we had, you know, like an extra $50 because we were eating out of our stockpile for a week, that meant we could add so much to the stockpile, which would get us through more time, more time, more time. So over the last five years, we have been really fortunate to change our financial position. We are making better money and we have all the furniture we need and stuff like that. So we're not trying to like refill our home or buy the essentials like pots and pans and stuff like that anymore. So we're able to focus on more things like adding more money to our grocery budget. So these days we spend closer to $150 a week and we still usually come in very short of that because the stockpile is so efficient and we're just really good at grocery shopping right now. I have found that this budgeting system that I use continues to really carry us through each week and it's super helpful. So as a result, we're able to feed two adults, a youth, a baby, two dogs and three cats off of $150 a week. Sometimes less. My phone's trying to die. Sometimes less. So when actually often less. So when it hits that less, usually I would continue to grow my stockpile. But because my stockpile is so plentiful right now living in an apartment, I feel very confident that I could feed my family for two to three weeks without ever going to the grocery store, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it does put you in a better purchasing position, right? So we don't really worry about shortages so much because we're able to add more each week, add more each week, and it grows and it grows and it grows. And it grows and then we just continue the process of going out and shopping for that week's that week's worth of groceries so that stockpile doesn't really get touched so much anymore and it's just there for security or to allow us to wait for certain ingredients to go on sale or maybe wait until a better time in the month to buy groceries when we have a little more money to a lot or whatever like that <laughs> so because we're in that position now we're able to use the extra money from our grocery budget that we're not spending every week, we're able to put that into a savings account to go towards our home. And that is actually accelerating our home savings quite a bit, sometimes as much as $75 a week, which is just so much money going into our savings and is super exciting. And then once we get into a home, the goal will be to do the very same thing, but grow the stockpile to have six months or more worth of food because now we will actually have space to store it. <laughs> and also we'll probably be living a lot further from the grocery store, so it won't be so easy just to go in and grab what we need. So 
That is what I call the stockpiling method. It is literally, you save like the tiniest little sliver of your grocery budget each week and you add stuff to your stockpile, whether it's a can of beans or to be honest with you, I would buy a bag of dried beans instead of a can of beans because a can of beans might be $2, whereas for $3, you can get a whole thing of dried beans and you'll get quite a bit more recipes out of the whole bag of dried beans. So we would do stuff like that right you just take those little slivers off the end of each week and you add stuff to the stockpile and you add stuff to the stockpile and you do it again and again until you're in the position where you don't really need to be shopping as frequently and then your stockpile's nice and grown and you can eat really well every month you increase your purchasing power you can get better bulk discounts you can buy more at one time because you're not worried about you know if i if i buy all this rice for this really great discount then all we're eating all week is rice <laughs> you're not in that position you have the variety at home so you can go ahead and take advantage of that really good deal and just continue to grow the stockpile so it reaches further and further and further so i call this the snowballing stockpiling method because it actually relates back to a budgeting hack I learned about a long time ago that you may know and it's literally just a snowballing budget where basically let's say you had three credit cards and the payment on each one was $50 and maybe one of your credit cards is $500 and one is a thousand and one fifteen hundred right maybe this is how it's laid out for you so for the budgeting method you would say let's say you could do a double payment on one credit card you would do that on the smaller credit card and then it would get paid off and now you'd take that hundred dollars and you'd apply it to the next credit card and you'd be able to pay 150 dollars off every month on that credit card till it's gone and then 200 dollars on the big one until it's gone so it's kind of the same thing because you're going to be purchasing you know maybe a two dollar bag of pasta and now because you have a staple ingredient you don't necessarily need to buy rice or quinoa or pasta or anything in the following week because you got a big extra bag of it and so because of that now you have more money for produce or now you have more money for meat and you can purchase more of those things maybe you can get a five pound bag of carrots and you keep what you need for the week and you put the rest in the freezer well now you have all that extra pasta and you have all those carrots in the freezer so now you don't necessarily need to get as many produce items in a week as well and you just keep doing it keep doing it keep doing it until your freezer's full and your pantry's full and you have those options available to you and you feel good because <laughs> you're not looking in your fridge thinking what am I going to feed everybody <laughs> you have plenty to feed people so I hope that helped you I will definitely be coming back here to share more tips I hope that you will share in the comments below if you have any questions I hope that I explain this really clearly and easily um, and I hope that this page can grow and be something beautiful I've had so much fun sharing with you on Instagram sharing my tips with you getting to know you, sharing my opinions about life with you on Instagram and seeing the community grow. And I'm really looking forward to hopefully growing that community here on YouTube and being able to give you not just ideas and kind of opinions, but actual tips that are going to help you make your budget go further, that are gonna help you reach your goals, whether that be financial goals or your homemaking goals or femininity goals or homeschooling goals, whatever it might be, I hope that I can help you with that because from the bottom of my heart, my biggest goal is just to help as many people as possible. Thank you so much for joining my new YouTube page. Again, I'm Julie from Mrs. Prairie Wife over on Instagram. I have to like enunciate that really well because I have a tendency to make it sound like Mrs. Prairie Wife. <laughs> and yeah, that's me. If you have any questions, let me know. Bye!